The following content has been provided by RWTH Aachen University. I'd like to complete the, uh, the, the discussion on responsiveness uh, to talk about um, some of today's um, most critical hits on performance in general. Um, one of you know, it, things have changed from the way that software used to be written and what the bottlenecks used to be to what they are today. Um, today, some of the things that really slow down software um, are basically um, the worst thing you can do is basically have synchronous I/O on any kind of data carrier that has moving parts. Right? That's a really bad idea. Not quite as bad with SSDs or you know flash drives in general. But um, hard disk access is still some, something that is you know, severely impacting performance. Um, of course, that's also true for any other kind of synchronous I.O. you do. Um, synchronous meaning that you wait for the response right before you continue. Um, for example, via the network. But that's very well known. Right? The, the, the network can be slow is something that people know. And there's good APIs uh, that are asynchronous so that you can work around the, some of the latency problems of, of network traffic. But with hard disks, a lot of the uh, I/O is still, you know, expected to be fast enough, and so it's often synchronous operations, which then will, you know, severely slow down your software. Another thing that is also um, a major bottleneck these days um, is um, what happens when you use a lot of memory. Um, of course, stuff is, you know, faster in memory uh, than it is on the hard disk. But um, you know, today's architectures really have trouble holding a lot of memory in the various super fast caches that you have. Um, it's often faster to recompute a result rather than trying to get it out of memory. Because you know, the CPU can really churn through uh, computations very quickly. Um, and plus, of course, if you use a lot of memory as a footprint in your application very quickly, then you start swapping things out to disk, and then you're back to hard disk access, which is slow. Um, another thing that is uh, a problem are threads that interlock and that sort of you know keep them keep each other from from moving forward. Um, this has led actually to an interesting um, development that we've seen, um, where I was talking earlier about that you know you do, you have to do multi-threading if you want to have responsive software, and that's that's absolutely true. But the way you do that multi-threading is beginning to change. Uh, it used to be that you would program that explicitly with your own, you know, thinking through the various threats that are going on. And nowadays, more and more software frameworks are offering you um, essentially dispatchers. Let's say you just throw in your jobs, and they will queue them, multi-thread them, put them where they need them, and, and make sure that nothing gets locked up. Um, so Grand Central Dispatch, uh, GCD, is, a, is an architecture, for example, on uh, Mac OS X that does that kind of stuff, where you basically specify things like blocks or closures in your programming language. Um, um, lambdas is, is a word that you find in other languages that basically just uh, sit there in a small computational blocks that are then being um, dispatched by this architecture to um, an available resource. This is even true then for you know, making use of the GPU and its highly parallel, super fast processing power um, that you know, these dispatchers then can also distribute stuff across the CPU and GPU to make use of that additional resource. Number four, and, and these five things came out of, um, uh, one of my, my, my students was telling me about these. These were things that he uh, learned while he was uh, interning at Apple. And uh, those were the things that people were engineers that were looking at particularly to make sure that stuff doesn't, uh, doesn't lock up and doesn't slow down. Um, number four was these unsuitable data structures, unsuitable control structures, um, like iterating over large arrays or um, you know, where you'd rather really use a hash map to get to your data much faster. Um, and of course, one of those classics, um, code that's inside a loop that isn't really, you know, that is really invariant that should actually be factored out, the, out of the loop or um, things that are highly... Um, how do you say, uh, loops, nested loops that are going on that you should actually rather 
uh, formulate as a, you know, a SIMD, you know, a single instruction multiple data stream uh, implementation that can run on your vector unit on your CPU. Those kinds of things often slow down code a lot. And then finally, and I think this is, uh, this is probably my favorite, um, reinventing the wheel. Uh, when you sit down, especially when you're not really familiar with the framework yet, you tend to try to do a lot of things yourself. You think like, oh, I need software to, I don't know, uh, solve a um, linear equation system. So let me write some code to solve. Don't do that. <laughs> you know, there's routines out there um, that can do that for you and that have been written and optimized a lot. And especially when they come from the um, vendor of, of the operating system, then they probably also make use of all the shortcuts and special access ways that they have. And it's very hard to beat these. Um, and implementing, you know, going like, oh, I need a 3D animation. So implementing your own 3D animation um, code doesn't make sense, of course, when this stuff is available. Uh, because oftentimes when you do reinvent that wheel, then the wheel you're really reinventing uh, looks more like this. And it's the, you know, the, what we like to call the spinning pizza of death on, on Mac OS X. Um, so uh, those were the performance tips uh, that um, are sort of, you know, today's engineering practice, which has changed a little with, you know, SSDs and stuff. That's why I was trying to bring this up here. Um, if you'd like to know more um, about that topic, look at the book um, by Jeff Johnson that I mentioned that talks about responsiveness a lot. And now I'd like to um, get to the topic of notations. This stuff is taken from Alan Dix's actually excellent book. Um, Alan Dix, Janet Finlay, Greg About, and Russell Beal wrote Human Computer Interaction a couple years ago. Um, this is, I think, the third edition. Uh, and it's, to my mind, still the best single volume textbook on HCI uh, that covers a lot of the things that we talk about in this um, class in general. And this particular chapter on design notations, um, or this lecture on design notation, was mostly inspired by what they talk about this topic in uh, chapter 16 on, on that book. This content was provided by RWTH, Aachen University.